this. Your hometown station, KHTS. Time is 3.40 on your hometown station, KHS. The housing market is cutthroat, especially here in California. It's a treacherous territory, especially for first-time homebuyers. You need someone in your corner, maybe even a team, that, can, that you can trust, a group that you know will act in good faith and in your best interests. That's why it's a no-brainer. It's not even a question. If you want to buy a home around the Santa Cruz Valley, sell the one you're currently in, or if you hit a little bump in the road financially but want to stay in the house you got, you got to be in touch with Rich Sherman and his team at Alt Realty. And Rich joins me in studio right now. How you doing, Rich? I'm great. Happy to be here as always. Well, I Thanks for having me in. i got to turn your mic on first. Oh, uh, oh, very good. Yeah, my bad. I, I'm not being a professional over here. Now, Rich, <laughs> I, I was reading a story last week that concerned me greatly. Sure. I, I actually thought of you immediately when I was reading it. Well, thank you. And, and it just so happened that you were coming in this week, so uh, I, I took a little bit of solace in the serendipity there. What you got? Okay, so there's a long-time rule of thumb that recommends at least a 20% down payment on, on a house. Is no. that right? No. No? Uh, well, okay, okay. Not, it's not quite as easy yes or no. The bottom line, if you have 20% to yeah. put down, uh, don't let me stop you because the whole idea is, and the reason you, this exists, is because if you're putting 20% or more down, you avoid mortgage insurance. Uh, if you have a loan, a, a first loan on a property that is less than, in the bank's parlance, 80% loan to value, 80, 20, 100, right? Mm -hmm. Their parlance, 80%. Uh, then it is required that you have some sort of mortgage insurance of some sort. But really, it just becomes, you know, every borrower is different. It depends, depends on what you want to do. Uh, FHA, for example, is a great way to buy a house that's 3.5% down. Mm -hmm. If you're a veteran and you have VA eligible, Ability, uh, VA is 0% down, and that's a great way to buy a house. There's 5% conventional. There's all sorts of different options. It really depends on the client. I wouldn't put 15% down. No. Uh, as there are no there, you'd be a 10%, you'd be overfunding a 10% program. But that's not all I could. Uh, if you're close to it, 20% is good because it'll save you a couple hundred bucks a month in PMI depending on your purchase price. But don't let that stop you because if you're trying, if the idea, especially if you're a first time buyer, if the idea is you're going to try to save money up until you reach that 20% threshold, uh, unless you have uh, some sort of windfall coming your way, the odds of you being able to do that are very, very low. You're much better off just getting in the game and then using that house to catapult you to the next one. That's typically the way it's done with most buyers. So 20% is not a bad thing. Uh, neither is 30 or 40%, frankly, uh, but it's not absolutely not necessary. My thinking was the representatives from Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, they're saying this 20% rule is a myth, which kind of you're it is. agreeing with. Yeah. And antiquated su suggestion maybe, but uh, I, I think putting as little as 3% down, it could lead people down kind of a, a dark, dangerous path, don't you think? If well, you're only putting 3% down. Well, it's not about how much you put down. It depends on the payment. I mean, yeah. it depends on the payment you're comfortable with. I mean, if your uh, threshold for pain is 2500 bucks a month, if that's your comfort level, then that's your comfort level. If it's 2000 a month, if that's your comfort level, the trick, regardless of whatever loan you get, is not to exceed your budget, is not to exceed that comfort level. When a client comes into us and says, look, our, our budget is 3000 a month, just, just to use that as a number. Mm -hmm. Then the next question is, well, how much money do we have to do this? There are really two principal things you want to look at when buying a house. There's total move-in amount and there's total monthly payment. Everything else, purchase price, interest rate, those are all very important numbers, but they're only important as to how they bear on those two. So if you're mm -hmm. a buyer, you want to concentrate on total move-in amount and total monthly payment. Uh, that's where the rubber meets the road. Those are the, those are the monies you got to pay out. Uh, total move-in is usually down payment plus closing costs plus loan fees. And total move-in right now depends on your interest rate, but a good rule of thumb is about $7 per thousand, including taxes and insurance. So if you borrow 200,000 bucks, it's going to be about 1400 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. 300,000 bucks is going to be about $2,100 a month, give, give or take. Depends on credit and qualifications, et cetera. But it's a good rule of thumb. Now, I can imagine finding a starter home around the Santa Clarita Valley anywhere in California. It's got to be tough, right? Uh, yeah, it is. Well, it also depends on what you're looking for. In the Santa Clarita Valley, our average sales price, depending on who you talk to, which index you look at, is right around 600000 For mm -hmm. first-time buyers, you're probably looking for a single-family home. You're looking probably in the high fours, low fives, if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. uh, when a house comes on the market, there's one who's putting together now in Canyon Country. Uh, they put it on the market, in my estimation, a bit low, uh, under significantly under 500000 and they have multiple offers on it. We're trying to get that sorted out today for a client. I'm pretty confident about it. But it moves quickly, right? Especially yeah, it was on the market for two days. Yeah, yeah, right. It was on the market for two days. Uh, now, I guess that's where my concern came in in the article, in that same article, it mm -hmm. said uh, that the average savings of people who don't own homes is 5200 That was mm -hmm. in 2016. And so I guess where this leads is uh, you guys have a rental rebate program, right. which kind of takes... Uh, sure, it takes care of that. Yeah, sure. right. Well, with rental rebate, it's, you know, we give, we give people money. That's what we do. There's a lot of... Um, 
I, I referred to this as fat and I got in trouble. How about excess? There's a lot of excess <laughs> in uh, real estate transactions sort of in general. Um, and, you know, what one guy defines as excess, somebody else defines as, you know, their income. So I don't want to mm -hmm. go down that road too far. But uh, there is a lot you can play with inside a real estate transaction. So what we do is when we have somebody who wants to buy a house, we can give them 10% of the rent they had previously paid uh, to go buy a house. And you don't pay it back. It's a grant. We are the people who give away money. We literally give buyers money to buy houses. We give sellers money to fix up their houses so that we can resell them. And if you're having trouble making your mortgage payment or if you're having trouble, we do loan modification and foreclosure defense completely free of charge. You mentioned loan modification. The national average, 14%. You guys have a success rate of over 80%. Yeah, 80%. Last time you were yeah. in, I was saying you obviously sent Luca yeah. Brazzi, some other uh, uh, goons down to the bank. And how do you, uh, uh, what do you, what do you attribute your success actually, to? Melissa just did a piece on me. She came out to the office and she said, I've got this Godzilla stuff. She's, she's decided I'm Godzilla. Uh, I'll take either. Um, but um, what's the secret? It's really, it's knowing what we're doing. We've had a lot of experience doing this. We've been doing loan modification work and foreclosure defense work for uh, clients in, the, in and around Santa Clara, in and around Los Angeles now for the better part of, God, almost 20 years years. And so we have a lot of experience there. There's some banks who we've actually had some input in actually how they write their underwriting guidelines for loan modifications. It, it happens. We've had a little bit of input in what's now, what's called the Homeowner Bill of Rights, which is a, an important document, an important thing to know if you're in that position, the law in California. So we know the law, we know the rules, we know what the banks are looking for, but really more than anything, it's it's we were talking about just before we came on the air, banks are foolish. They do foolish things because they let people who really shouldn't be making these decisions often in a position to make these decisions. Right. So the key is to go to the bank and say, look, my plan, my client's plan is better than your foreclosing or whatever you're doing because you will lose less money in this scenario. And with a bank, it's very simple. Whatever, you know, being a friend of mine used to say being mad at a bank for acting scummy about money is like being mad at a shark for swimming. It's just, it's what they do. So when you, when you, if you want a shark to go left instead of right, you put what the shark eats on the left instead of the right and it'll go to the left. Mm -hmm. It's really not that different when dealing with a bank. When you go to a bank and you explain to them, hey, look, this is where you're going to lose the least amount of money and as a bonus, keep the client in the house because that's the way they think. Obviously, we think the other way around. Uh, Follow this plan, you'll lose less money. They take that to their boss, who goes to the boss's boss, et cetera, et cetera. And now they have this wonderful plan that will keep this family in the house and the bank will lose less money. It's a lot more complicated than that, but that's basically the idea. And then beyond that, it's just tenacity. It's just staying after these guys with a whip in a chair and making them go where we need them to go. Because the bottom line is, there is no math you're going to employ. Um, especially if you have a house that doesn't have any equity in it, where the mm -hmm. bank is going to be better off with a foreclosure, or more importantly, the homeowner is going to be better off with a foreclosure. So everything we do is client-centric, what's best for the client. And in nine cases out of ten, and we're 99 out of 100, I'd even say, it's keeping the client in the house. That's what's best for everybody. We just have to find a way to do that. And often we get clients who try it again and again and again on their own. They've been told nothing but no, uh, because that seems sometimes to be the only word the bank understands. And you have to find a way to, to get through that, that kind of that malaise that the bank gets into, that, that ridiculous, well, they've all worked this way, so this one should work that way, too. You've got to do... You've, you've got to break that cycle. Yeah, you've got to present them with a better option. You've got to break that cycle. I'll give you an example. We have a client right now who uh, came in about to lose their house. They were days away from foreclosure when we met them. Uh, we put a stop to the foreclosure. Their payment was, memory serves, 34, they were 3400 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. uh, their payment as of last week is now 2000 bucks a month because they were they had a 7% interest rate. They, were, they had no Ooh. idea that what their interest rate was. They didn't even know. Uh, and now they have a 3.5% interest rate, so that's much better. And it was just a matter of going to the bank and you know hammering on this and making it work. And so now their payment is a lot lower. The bank is getting payments again. Everybody's happy. We dropped it from, again, $3,400 a month to 2000 a month. That's a hell of a difference. We're saving them 1400 bucks a month, almost half their mortgage payment. Heck yeah. And they're still in the house. They're very happy campers. Now they can build some equity. He's so. Richard Sherman. Him and his team at Alta Realty. Alta Realty. They're working for you. Yep. Call well, me. If, if you need me, call me. I'm, the best way to get a hold of me is always to call me. My cell is 661-714-1400. That number again is 661 714 1400 and you can call me or text me at that number 24 hours a day seven days a week i still answer my own phone i've been encouraged not to but i still answer my own phone uh so call me anytime 24 hours a day i have the answers that you need he's a big businessman but it's not yeah. a big business he <laughs> runs a uh, lean machine at alter work. realty Amen. you can check him out at rich sherman that's sherman with the z mm -hmm. just replace the h with a z mm -hmm. and dot com you know rich sherman.com for all your real estate needs in the santa Cruz area like he said 24 7 the guy's working 80 to 100 hours a week he nothing. never sleeps i got nothing else to do it's a lot of coffee <laughs> And uh, Rich, thank you for coming in, and always I look forward to seeing you the next time. Always a pleasure. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Go check him out, richsherman.com. Give him a call as well. One more time. 661-714-1400. 661-714-1400. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Awesome. Rich, we'll see you next time we see you. Happy to help. Always come in. Awesome. Quick break.